here at uh, Robert McCubbin's Primary School. About two years ago I did a commission down here, funded by the Veteran Affairs, and uh, it was a fantastic project because I was able to work with the kids here. The art teachers are really good. So um, let's go and have a look and uh, see how it's weathering. All right, let's have a look. As you walk to the front entrance here, which is where the office is, you've got the sculpture just down here, and it's still looking fantastic. What was interesting when I was casting this piece, I had to make quite a substantial mould, as you can imagine. Uh, I broke it up into a couple of sections. But uh, yeah, so first I made it in uh, plaster, and then uh, I actually used quite a bit of air drying clay with some of the detail here, and I used my next door neighbour's face. And while it was setting, uh, I was reading about the local area around here in Box Hill, and there was a particular grazier, a winemaker, and really a professional soldier who was in the Boer War uh, and then later went to World War One, and really was one of the main uh, movers and shakers. When this came out of the mould, I was fascinated to notice that the mould had the chap at the front here had a cleft chin and my next door neighbour definitely doesn't have one of those. And it was almost perfectly positioned right in the centre of his chin. And I thought that's strange and you know I was reading about this guy and I really wanted to see a picture of him and sure enough uh, along with his rather impressive moustache which I didn't put in because I didn't know about him was uh, cleft chin and it was almost like the, you know his the spirit of that chap was coming through because he actually owned this area um, and this was you know part of his uh, orchards and his vineyards that he was you know doing his thing here so uh, it was just an interesting aspect of how this piece turned out. This is a World War One memorial, and what I sort of endeavoured to do with the bronze was to try and capture a moment on the ground at Gallipoli of World War One, along with the appropriate World War One badge. Uh, you've got other little interesting details here: uh, bullet casings, smashed wood, and also a pawn which, uh, you know, is quite symbolic probably of the endeavours of the blokes involved who no doubt might have felt like a pawn in the scheme of World War I. There's some broken biscuits that have just been chewed and for some reason this guy's taken his shoes off. Uh, there was extremely difficult conditions there and uh, foot rot was a major killer and a crippling disease to get on the field. You know, one of the interesting aspects of, of Gallipoli for Australia is that it was really uh, Winston Churchill who uh, was just basically a bureaucrat in the system. And uh, But he was smart enough to recognise that oil, which had been recently discovered in uh, the Middle East, would be a very important thing in the future. And uh, really, there wasn't actually a factor in World War One at all. But uh, he basically thought, well, a stitch in time, let's send over some less important group uh, to do the impossible. You know, when I was working on the piece, I really got a feeling for uh, how difficult that would have been for those guys there and how, how much of a, you know, because I mean, the, the local guy that was here, uh, he'd done the Boer War and that was savage and brutal. But uh, it was pretty clear that um, there's not a patch on Gallipoli. You know, just to give you some idea, when the bombing was going on, particularly on the Western Front, the bombing was so severe when the geologists came in and did their uh, surveys after the war. 50 metres had been taken off every hillside and the bombs had basically churned the soil over and over again and it was really human beings trying to get their head around the machine, which they totally weren't expecting. A lot of guys around here would have never even seen a motor car. Uh, and then they rock up to the battlefield on the Western Front 
and they're seeing these ominous machines and it's interesting because Robert Hughes talks about the, the shock of the news in relation to the machine in World War I. Uh, there was this huge hope at the start of the 1900s that machines could do the most miraculous things and of course they could. They were flying and you know they've got the Wright brothers flying for the first time. You've got cars, you've got powered boats. I mean, it was like this was going to be an incredibly bright future for mankind. And the struggle was kind of over. And yet World War I rocks up and you see the sharp edge of what this mechanical reality was all about. They're actually a, um, a pair of boots from World War I and uh, the, the local Vauxhall RSL, Brian Tatterson, who was fantastic. He was my historian liaison. Uh, and he gave us those boots and uh, I mulled them up and you know, put all the different elements in there. And uh, you know, it's great, the kids can come out here and get a sort of a sense of don't ever do this and we must avoid war at all costs. No, because I wasn't really comfortable with glorifying the whole concept. Uh, which I don't think we're really doing any justice to memory anyway. So there's a bit of a story. One of the things that I think we recognise now, and they certainly didn't in World War I, you know, the great revelations of Freud hadn't really taken place. Uh, that, you know, these guys were coming home and really the war had just started because for the four years that they were involved in the war, it was, you know, 20 years of psychological damage with post-traumatic stress, which we know so well now. But at the time, basically, they were being described as cowardice and a bit yellow. Um, but the extreme experience that they went through in World War One, I, I don't think can really we can get any concept of, because it was just sheer horror. At least we have an understanding of machines now, and at least we understand what we're up against. But basically, back then. Uh, they had no plan, no strategy. It was a type of war they'd never faced. And I think basically the concept was that you blow uh, a wall of explosives in front of your soldiers. You know, friendly fire must have been a massive amount of the casualties. And you basically walk behind that wall of bombs. And then the other side does the same thing. And they did that for two years, just churning that um, soil over and over again in bodies. My uncle was over there, the same location as the Western Front, went for a bit of a walk and discovered that there was rotting boots coming out of the um, side of the creek and that struck me and I think that's really where the idea of the boots first came from. My studio is just literally five minutes away walking distance and the children were able to walk from the school uh, to my studio and they all sat down in my studio and they really had a fantastic experience of being in the art environment of an artist. Yeah, they really felt they were a part of this and they came out quite a number of times and you know the, the thousand or so children that were at the school, uh, they, were, they were very excited about not only walking to my studio. Uh, but ha really having a hands-on experience on what was going on here with the artwork. Hope you enjoyed that video guys and I'll talk to you soon.